Okay, starting part two of birthdays. I was last leaving off in quick, quick, and quick voice. Of, the fact is, we're going to read Jeremiah 7 18 again because I like this verse. The children gather wood, and the fathers kindle the fire, and the women knead their doughs to make cakes to the Queen of Heaven and to pour out drink offerings unto other gods. That they may provoke me to anger. Provoking God to anger. I'm going to read this again. The idea of putting candles on a birthday cake goes back to ancient Greece. If this backs up Jeremiah 7, 18. The Greeks worship many gods. G, small, O, D, S. Small, G, O, D, D, E, S, S, E, S. Goddesses. Among them was one called Artemis. Artemis was the goddess of the moon. The Greeks celebrate her birthday once each month by bringing special cakes to her temple. The cakes were round like the full moon, and because the moon glows with light, the cakes were decorated with lighted candles. And I was saying the fact is, if this queen of heaven that you find here in Jeremiah 7, and what you find with these Greeks worshiping Mary, the queen of heaven, the fact is, if you came out of the Roman Catholic Church, and you're a born-again Bible-believing Christian, you just put yourself back into the Roman junk. You went back to Egypt. You went back to Babylon. You went back to the Roman church, and you can find that Roman church in Mark, Matthew 15 and Mark chapter 6 having a birthday. You went back to Satan. And you are the bride of Christ, and when you go back sleeping with who you're not supposed to be sleeping, that's adultery. You've committed adultery with Satan and his church. What do you think God thinks of that? Why do we say happy birthday? Jeremiah didn't say happy birthday. Job didn't say happy birthday. They said quite opposite to each other. For good wishes of our friends and relatives are supposed to protect us from evil spirits. Now, what kind of nonsense does a Christian have to be worrying about evil spirits? Have we not got the victory through, through Jesus Christ? I had to shed blood by the victory of the cross. Oh, death, where is thy sting? Oh, death, where... Uh, but you turn around and say, Happy Birthday. To protect from evils. Imagine. Uh, 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 here's an evil spirit. Uh, oh my. He said happy birthday. I can't go over there. Uh. You need to be locked up and put into a rubber room for that nonsense. All in the name of Jesus, of course. All right. Pin the tail on the donkey. The games we played at birthday parties are often a symbol of trying to know the unknown. In this case, of course, the unknown is the future, or the new year of the life that lies ahead of the birthday child. One of the oldest games is pin the tail on the donkey. You do know what you're supposed to do with, a, with, a, with an ass in the Bible, don't you? You're to redeem him or break his neck. Oh. Did I say neck? The Leviticus 13.13 13 or Deuteronomy. I'm going to have to check the reference on that one. But you are to redeem a, 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 an ass with a lamb or you are to break his neck. How that one came to be. Matches our study, doesn't it? A large picture of a donkey without a tail is pinned to the wall. Each child of the party is given a donkey's tail made out of paper and a pin to stick through it. I would not want to put a pin on a, on a donkey's rear end. Be in a hospital, if not in heaven. Then one by one, the child is blindfolded. They are spun around a few times and pointed in the general direction of the donkey. You try to tell me you're going to raise your children, Christian, godlike, by putting a blindfold around and then trying to, you know, spin them around and then send them off blindfolded? The child who pins the tail the closest 
to where it should be on the donkey wins a prize. There are other versions of the game as pin the nose on the clown and pin the ear on the bunny. But the idea is trying to guess correctly while blindfolded is the same. That child has more powers that he was closer than anybody other. I guess if you blindfold him, you can see him through that third eye that we're supposed to have. That's where the mark of the beast is going to go. All these customs and traditions connected with the observance of birthdays have to do with guessing the future, good wishes for the future, good luck charms against evil spirits and the like. How many times has evil spirits spoken up? I think one of these studies I'm going to do is just on evil spirits themselves. Because they keep showing up, those little bad little evil spirits. All the birthday rituals, games, and ceremonies are a form of well-wishing toward the birthday child. Which are supposed to work their magic. Have you studied magic in the Bible? But all the church today, all the Christians are reading, you know, uh, Chronicles of Narvia, whatever. They're reading... Uh, Harry Potter, all these books are supposed to be, you know, some of them are supposed to be Christian and all that, and they're talking about magic, little trolls and you know, all that junk. Wake up! But as for, but as we see, the custom is totally pagan. The ceremonies and games involve warding off evil spirits and protecting the birthday child from evil. Why don't you put the child Christian under the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ and pray for that child and let that child be directed by God? Imagine me with my family, my wife and my two children, uh, some kind of knucklehead kind of thing, you know, to prevent them from evil spirits through the day. That's nonsense. That's stupid. I'd rather put my family under the blood and under prayers of Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit than some nonsense. Okay. Back to normal. The Lore of Birthdays, Linton, page 20. Originally, the idea of birthday greetings and wishes for happiness was rooted in magic. The works of spells for good and evil is a chief usage of witchcraft. You know what the Bible says about witches in the Old Testament? You do know. Tell you what. Go knock on your pastor's door and say, Pastor, what does the Bible say in the King James Bible about witches in the Old Testament? Ask him. I'll leave that up to your own personal study. I lost my place again. One is especially susceptible to use such spells on his birthday. As one's personal spirits are about at that time. Dreams dreamed on the birthday eve should be remembered. For they are predictions of the future brought by the guardian spirit. Which hover over one's bed on the birthday eve. Listen, if anything's hovering over my bed, I'm going to get a can of Raid and spray it. And if it don't die, I'm going to put it under the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I'm going to try to fall back to sleep. I don't need this foolishness. Something hovering over my bed has got wings. It may be a bird. You know what Mark chapter 4 says about birds? You do know what about the birds, don't you? You do know that, that Solomon said, a bird of the air shall... Ah, you do know. You do know what Beelzebub is. You know, little fly creatures. You do know. And Beelzebub, you know, is the devil. You do know about the birds and the bees. <laughs> you know, the bees that God used to fight off an army and the flies. You do know about them. You do know that they're of Satan. I hope you know. Oh, Birthday greetings have power for good or ill. Because one is closer to the spirit world on his day. Now, just picture this. I, I, okay, I'm sarcastic. I'm great. Amen. A guy is standing on the railroad tracks. Here comes a train. Happy birthday! Boom. <laughs> hey. I said happy birthday. Hey. I said happy. It didn't work.
Good wishes bring good fortune. Not always. But the reverse is also true. So should one avoid enemies on one's birthday and be surrounded only by well wishers. Wow. Imagine a guy having a birthday in a prison. Imagine a Jew having a birthday in World War II surrounded by Nazis. You see what kind of mess this stuff is? Happy birthday and many happy returns of the day are the traditional greetings. Traditional birthday cake and candles also have their origins in the ancient pagan idolatry worship. The ancients believed that the fire of the candles had magical powers. And the children gathered the wood and the fathers kindled the fire. They may provoke me to anger, God says. They offered prayers and made wishes to be carried to the gods on the flames of the candles. Oh, come on! The Bible speaks from God that our prayers are incense. The cloud of incense that goes up before Him. It doesn't speak of, uh, of this nonsense of burning candles or anything like that. And that they go up in the flames in the candle. The only ones that went up in the flames were the ones that uh, came down to the... Oh... Sam, uh, Samson's parents. I believe he went up in the flame. Maybe Gideon's t Gideon's angel that visited him. They're stealing from the Bible with their own conjunctions and junk. Thus we. Oh, by the way, prayers to wishes be carried off by the gods. So you pray to gods. I want to see if I can find this real quick. Probably won't. If I can't, I won't. Um, no, that's not the one I'm looking for. I'm over here. Let's see if I can find it real quick. I don't. I may not be able to find this verse. Like the man said, I knew it was in there. Let me just check one more place. I thought I would have this one pinned down. Um, I guess not. No, I'm sorry. I well, I had this one marked. They will. Thus, will. Yeah, thus, we still have widely practiced birthday custom of making a wish. Making a wish before you blow out the candles is the pagan way of praying to the gods that they will carry their prayer up to heaven. Did you get that? Then blowing out the candle so that God can be carried up in the flame. Well, the only God I know that's in the flame, that will be in the flame one day, is Satan. And he'll be in the lake of fire. The Greeks again celebrated the birthday of the moon goddess Artemis with the cakes adorned with lighted candles. We've already discussed that. Hordotus, H-E-R-O-D-O-T-U-S, in the Persian Wars, Book 2, Chapter 82. The Egyptians. Genesis 40, discovered to which of the gods each month and day is sacred, and found out from the day of man's birth what he will meet with in the course of his life, and how he will end his days, and what sort of man he will be. Again, it's astrology. Astrology goes back to paganism, goes back to Egypt. When we examine the principles of God and law, God's law closely as they relate to the birthday celebrations we can understand why neither Christ nor his apostles nor any true follower observed their holidays birthday excuse me as noted earlier the practice has an origin of idolatry worship of the sun moon and stars 
The Greeks believed that everyone had a protective spirit or demon, D-A-E-M-O-N, who attended his birth and watched over him in life. The spirit had a mystic relation with the God on whose birthday the individual was born. That goes back to the Egyptians. The Romans also subscribed to this idea. Now get this. The notion was carried down in human belief as reflected in a guardian angel, the fairy godmother, and the patron saint. And more about this lighting candles, the custom of lighting candles on the cake started with the Greeks. Honey cakes, round as the moon, and lit with tapers, were placed on the temple's altars of Artemis. Birthday candles in folk belief are endowed with special magic for granting wishes. Lighted tapers and sacrifice, sacrificial fires have been a special mystic significance ever since man set up, it, set up altars to his gods, small g, o, d, s. Birthday candles are thus an honor and tribute to birthday child to bring good fortune. Hogwash. Now I'm going to take you over to one more place in the Bible. And I'm going to lay it on your hands. 1 John 1 9. Now you have an option. You have a choice by God. James says, To him that knoweth to do good, and doeth it not, to him it is sin. You now know what the scriptures say. You now know the history of birthdays. And I'm going to offer an altar call now, which I rarely do. The fact is, maybe you are thinking that, you know what? That's right. It is wrong. And I have done such a thing. And I'm a sinner. In 1 John 1 9 it says, If we confess our sins, are you ready to confess your sins of birthday celebrations? From the time that you were saved unto today? Have you acknowledged that you've done wrong? That there are wickedness? That even if you were of the Roman Catholic Church, you have gone back. Listen, my friend, I fall under this too. I need to confess and have this washed under the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. For if Christ were to come right now, I have not asked God to forgive me. I will have this laid down at the judgment seat of Christ, and it will burn up like the candle. And you can blow it out, but it's going to be no prosperous when it has nothing but ashes. I've asked God now to wash me in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. To cleanse me of the sins of this birthdayness. And to wash me in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. It says if we confess our sins. He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. And to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If you have asked the Lord to, to, to put it under the blood. To be washed in the blood of the sins of the birthday. You are clean. And the Bible says. That Jesus spoke to the woman that was taken into adultery. And he said to her, go and sin no more. Don't do this stuff no more. And be ready for other Christians to fight you. Oh, you legalists, you separate. You don't want to have any more fun. I'd rather not have fun in the devil's way and have God please with me and do that which is right. I'm not done. Verse 10. This is for the other people who don't want to change and they're probably not even listening no more. But if we say we have not sinned, I don't believe what he said. I think he's full of it. I'm a born again Christian. I'm going to still honor birthdays. I'm going to still keep on doing K. I don't care what he says. That's not a sin. If we say that we have no sin, not sinned, if we say that we have not sinned, we make him, God, a liar. And his word is not in us. Rejecting what we just saw from the Bible is you do not have the word of God in you no more. 